This is a very serious subject. As we know, in the last couple of decades across America, we've had lots of school shootings. This has broken my heart because I remember in the 70s going to school, we never had this issue. We walked to school every day and school was a safe haven for me and all of my friends and siblings. Now, not so much. Why has the dynamic changed? Why do kids not feel safe in schools anymore? Why don't parents feel safe sending their children to school anymore? Well, in this video, I will take a dive into that subject. It's very serious, but we've got to do something about it. And these are the things that I think might improve safety in schools. The teachers can't do it alone. First of all, we have to pay attention to our students, whether they're children or adults. And look at the signs. If they seem to be down, if their mood changes, then we have to have a plan of action in place to address these issues before they grow into bigger issues. This is on both parts, the parents and the teachers and the staff and the parents of other children. We all have to watch these behaviors collectively because this can be a snowball effect and can get bigger and bigger and grow into big anxiety issues and big anger issues that we really need to address. If you see a child that is being withdrawn or not really showing any kind of interest in school and not participating in any of the activities or showing any kind of aggression, this is something that needs to be addressed. And regardless if you're a teacher, a parent, a aunt, a neighbor, we need to not be afraid to address these issues. This is the part where it takes a village. We all have to pay attention to these behaviors so that we can address them. If you notice that children are showing aggression towards other children, this is also a big deal and something that we need to nip in the bud when we see this behavior happening. If you see children bullying other children, this is never okay. This is when an intervention needs to start at the beginning of this behavior and we need to go in and talk to those children and let them know how their behavior is affecting others and what could possibly happen if this behavior continues and let them know the consequences of their actions so that they can be remorseful and it will be a humbling experience for both of the children it is important that we have a no bullying atmosphere in school. And this needs to be enforced. We need to have this everywhere where kids will know that there's a consequence. Don't be afraid of being an adult. And if you're gonna lose your job, we cannot let that be over our head. You have to be an adult and take control of the situation and let the children know what's going on. This is not being mean. This is not being violent. This is being an adult and taking ownership and responsibility for those in your area. Regardless if they're children or adults, you need to be responsible and don't let this behavior continue because if something happens for like a school shooting, for instance, then you'll have this on your conscience forever. Another thing we need to consider, you never know what a person is going through outside of your environment, meaning at home or um, outside of school. You never know if there's any physical, verbal, or mental or sexual abuse going on outside of your space. So consider that and that will help you to have empathy when trying to help children or adults get through whatever they're going through. If a student confides in you about the situation, it is your sole responsibility to take action and get them help for whatever the situation may be. I think this is a difference. When I was growing up, it was the whole neighborhood raising me and no one had a problem with holding me accountable, even if it wasn't my parent or they even weren't related to me. It did not matter. It was everyone took part in my life and well-being. It was truly a village and I appreciate those times. And that is why I have the opinions that I do because I saw it done right. It is important that we bind as a community and know that our children are not just our children, it's the children in the community as well. And we have to be mindful 
and love those children as they are our own. If we see something wrong, then we need to let an adult know so that we can be aware and accountable so that those that need the help can get the help and talk to someone that can help them. And that is how we bridge this gap of lack of communication within our communities is that if we see a need, we address it and then it won't get bigger, hopefully. And this is uh, the real reason that I think that we have all of these shootings in schools is because we are not communicating with each other. We are not talking about the issues that are serious to us and we're ignoring those that really, really need help. And if you notice the pattern of school shootings, the perpetrators have always been kind of distant, not vocal, never popular, or given the attention that they would like. They've kind of been ignored. So I think the lesson is this, in this all is that we've got to stop ignoring people and we've got to pay attention to the bad behavior that we see and hold them accountable. We have to make sure that we take a stand and don't turn our eyes and our ears to things that we see. If we don't make changes, then we're going to have to stop having school in an actual brick and mortar place. It will be totally virtual. And if we don't make changes and stand up for our community and stand bold and tall for these children, then this is what's going to happen. Now, don't blame prayer not being in the school anymore because you do have a choice. You have a home. And if that is your belief, then you need to pray in your home. I pray every morning before my family leaves. That is my choice. And if prayer is not in the school, it's going to be in my home. And I'm going to pray that God puts a hedge on my family everywhere they go. So that is totally up to you. So you cannot blame the schools. If they don't want or have what you want religiously, then you have to make changes. You have homeschooling options. You have private school. You have um, schools that are um, faith-based. So there's lots of options. But don't stop with what the school chooses to do. You make the change. Thanks for watching and listening. This is Bootsy Blitch. And these are the things I think we can do to change the situation with the school shootings. And just overall change the nature of our society and Go back to the way things used to be when we used to hold those accountable and help those in need and not judge. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will have more videos like this in the future where we combat true issues and see how we can really, really make changes and hold people accountable and do the best we can as U.S. citizens and also as God's children.